<clears throat> okay, um, and now we'll talk about uh, Smilia Radic, uh, an important architect from Chile, just like Aravena, uh, and a little bit less known, but uh, a, a remarkable architect himself. So Smilian Radic, born on June 21st, 1965 in Santiago, is an international recognized Chilean architect of Croatian heritage. So Croatians are good not just at soccer, but also uh, at uh, architecture, even if born in Chile. Radic, Radic graduated in 1989 in architecture at the Catholic University of Chile and established his own office in 1995. Many of his projects are small scale, such as dwellings and installation designs that bridge across various cultural traditions. Radic was selected to design the 2014 Serpentine Gallery Pavilion in London. Uh, not a small honor. Here he is. Here he is. Here he is, and here he is. Some drawings, my Smilian Radic. I hope I pronounce well his name. I, I didn't double check on how to pronounce correct names. In case I do not pronounce correctly, I do not pronounce correctly his name. I apologize. Drawings, sketches sketches we, we, we can all do, but he transformed some of these sketches in uh, remarkable buildings. Is he a dreamer? To an extent, I think any group, good architect is a doer, is anchored in the earth and in, in a certain form of pragmatism, but is also a, a, a dreamer. You have to have some dreams. As uh, William Faulkner, the great uh, North American writer said, always dream, but it's not enough to dream and just lay on the sofa and look to the sky and dream and dream and dream. You also have to try to implement the dream and that is not easy. But the beauty of life maybe derives from exactly that, trying to implement some dreams, whatever dreams they are. This house he built, uh, inspired by the, the poem The Long Le Droit by Le Corbusier, and we are going to see it. So you can tell he is a dreamer, but we need dreamers. Without them, life would be unbearable. A sketch that probably led him to building the Serpentine Gallery Pavilion of 2014. He built it and we are going to see it. Extension to charcoal burners, house and public space in Culipran, Chile, 1998-1999. I'm very attracted to this kind of architecture. I don't know exactly what's going on here, but this kind of uh, archaic, archetypal uh, structure or architecture is intriguing, is magical, is mysterious, is, uh, is fantastic. And again, we have the proof that indeed he is a dreamer. I should know. I should not know more about this. I should. I should um, read the details. I don't know exactly what, why it was built and why it was built in this way. I, I'm just uh, responding to the images that I see, just as you see them, and I find it uh, very intriguing and uh, stimulating. Now, 
Peter Pite, Pite, Pite House in Barbudo, 5th region, Chile, 2003-2005. Here we see uh, clearly the, you know, the, the advancement of, uh, uh, you know, uh, a certain kind of modernism, a lot of glass, uh, prisms, and so on, but the landscape uh, proclaims uh, the untold story of nature. And uh, the, the dialectics between the building and nature uh, create a dynamic, uh, a very dynamic uh, environment. In Chile, of course. Milian Radic. He loves stones. And we are going to see the employment of stones in some other projects, giant rocks. Copper House, Talca, Chile, 2004, 2005, uh, 2005. This house constitutes a second tryout with, with copper as the material uh, or its outer facing. Uh, in the small town of Nercon in the south of Chile, the undulating texture of the co uh, copper or cooper, maybe it should be, no, it should be written copper, C O P P E R seemed to take on a historic quality by emulating the one that was used until the beginning of the 20th century in the house and churches of Chiloe, faced in galvanized steel. In this building, the modulated texture, uh, 3.5 by 95 centimeters with a thickness of 0 0.5 centimeter uh, of ripped electrolytic copper, uh, uh, <laughs> Something is covering my, uh, my, it exasperates me, the third line of this text, but you can read it. And so, you know, you read it because I, I don't see several words. Now I can because I moved the tab. So the electrolytic copper also imitates certain general aspects abounding in the area. The heavy layers of dro drooping, drooping or dropping, drooping, uh, I don't know, dropping. I don't know, tiles, the deformation in the geometry of the pitch of the roofs due to successive extension and, and uh, bouts of decay, the deep shadows these roof sh slopes produce and the continuous texture of the outer skin. Um, here is the building. So you see the copper, um, you know, clothing of the building. I guess that's him, although it might be that it's not him, but it looks like the silhouette looks like him from behind. Smilian Radic. These are big houses, like the previous one and this one. Um, they are not for everybody, but yeah, that's him. Sorry about these drawings, they are a little bit too um, uh, light. I, I took them from March daily. A restaurant in Santiago, 2005, 2007. This project won a public competition convoked by the municipality of Itacura in Santiago in 2005. The restaurant is sited at the northeast end of the park, a work by architect Teodoro Fernandez, 
that is still under construction and occupies a corner opposite some extraordinary water gardens stuck between a lookout hill and the pavement skirting the Bicentenario um, Avenue. So I guess you can do architecture in any circumstance, uh, even for a more prosaic uh, program, so to speak. And this uh, restaurant is a proof. Do you see the, the big rocks? I, I don't know where he finds these uh, giant, uh, giant rocks. He employs them, them all the time. It is a le legitimate building. Maybe it's not a masterpiece, but it's a building uh, well built, well conceived, and uh, for a for a function which is uh, as it is, a restaurant. But. Maybe even a restaurant could uh, have an eye on architecture, so to speak. Casa San Clemente, 2008, some sketches, and here is the house. Very different from the previous houses that we saw. Uh, rather interesting, this one as well. This could have been in Japan uh, very easily, but it's in Chile. Here we see again the giant uh, stones. Not bad. It's almost like a temple, a small temple. And again, these huge stones, look at them scattered everywhere. I like this idea of a kitchen counter on wheels. You know, there is a, a sense of that, you know, we don't live in order to eat, but we eat in order to live. Now, a house for the poem of the right angle. Of course, uh, the poem of the right angle belonged to and belongs to Le Corbusier, an esoteric uh, poem, so to speak. Uh, and uh, I wonder what uh, this work with alchemical overtones by Le Corbusier, uh, what, uh, what meaning it had for uh, Smilian Radic. Obviously, it impressed him. That's why he dedicated this house to this poem, the poem of the right angle. And this might be his best known work. This is the house. I don't know exactly in what way this house connects with that work by uh, Le Corbusier. But it's probably some kind of an homage to Le Corbusier through, uh, through this building.
So, you know, it is an homage to the right angle or to the poem of the right angle, but we see a lot of angles which are not right, meaning they are not 90 degrees. So maybe he was even, uh, you know, oppositional vis-a-vis -vis that work by Le Corbusier. And look at the plan. Not too many right angles here. There are a few, but they are not, uh, uh, you know, essential to the project. Giant skylights, quite dramatic and sculptural. This is an artwork, a sculpture, an installation that is part of the, the architecture of the interior, and you are going to see it. There it is. And I think it's very nice. So we can actually include artworks into the making of a building. I mean, not to be something that you hang on a wall, but something that participates to the configuration of space. Maybe from the very beginning. Obviously, not everything can be controlled by reason. There are other forces in life and the universe which do not conform to the predictability of, uh, you know, logical or, um, you know, reasonable uh, calculations. And maybe this is the meaning of this uh, snake-like um, tornado uh, in wood, or uh, I don't know how to call it. A winery in Chile 2014, dramatically other in the sense that uh, here is almost a cosmic uh, landscape. Uh, and it's just a winery. Um, now wineries do have money and some important architects like Herzog and de Moron also you know, worked uh, in this field, so to speak. Wineries have money, but when you look at this picture, you wouldn't imagine this is a winery. You'd say it's some kind of a cultural center or an observatory or I don't know what, but not a winery. We see also the, the value that is placed here on an abstracted landscape. and stones or rocks again, plenty of them, as like fallen stars. He ob obviously likes rocks and stones. It's impressive, but again, I'm not sure that, uh, you know, it's, it's quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, adequate for this function, uh, a winery. It's more like a place of, uh, you know, asking questions, existential questions and meditation.
Now, this, the Serpentine Gallery Pavilion in 2014 in London, here it is. Uh, too bad that these um, the pavilions, uh, you know, they they are removed after a while. But I think uh, most of them are, are rebuilt, reinstalled somewhere else, so they they don't get lost. Because it would be a shame, you know, to to have it lost, to destroy them. A bus stop in Krumbach, Austria, 2014. A little bit uh, whimsical. I'm not sure about all that glass in a country like Austria with its climate. In the summer, it could be too hot, and in the winter, uh, well, I guess, you know, you are dressed uh, for the outside, so. But, but the, the demagogy of glass is still there for all to see. Is this a birdhouse? Probably. An interesting idea. We don't think too often about birdhouses. And here he is, was probably manufactured in a shop. Community hub in San Pedro, then uh, architects Milian Radic, Eduardo Castillo, and Danilo teamed up on this community hub in Chile, featuring a bright red fire station, the raised black walkway, and a playground. Now, this is clearly a fire, um, you know, um, uh, fire station. Even in Romania, fire stations are sometimes red. They are supposed to be red, they are about fire. But the architecture is otherwise rather, you know, uh, elongated, so to speak, in a, in a, you know, assertive, modern uh, way. Some constructivist uh, gestures here. Maybe the Russian constructivists would have liked it uh, very much. Now, this theater is rather interesting, the Teatro Regional del Bio Bio Mechile. The architects developed a design with a contrasting interior and exterior appearance based on a code by Polish theater director Tadeusz Kantor, an avant-garde uh, director of theater. My packagings were an attempt to portend the nature of the object by hiding it, enveloping it. A skin of semi-transparent polytetrafluoroethylene PTFE is laid over a regimented concrete framework to create this um, uh, duality. And this is the building, how it looks like during the day, but inside is something else and also during the night. A theater. And the darker it turns out to be outside, the more you see the structure, the forest of columns uh, inside the building. So it's a play with a with a mask that plays such a role, uh, plays such a role in um, in theater. Or the veil, if you want. Milian Radic, 
Well, he had uh, some collaborators, but I like this mysteriousness that derives from uh, the usage of various materials, the veil, the shadows of the structure beneath or behind, um, you know, behind the veil. So there are levels of ambiguity here which are important. That's it. This was the last work that I showed uh, today of um, this uh, architect from Chile, Smilian Radic. Thank you.